My name is Daniel Berlin. I'm a game designer on Far Cry 3 multiplayer, and you're watching Platform 32. Having been a massive fan of the Far Cry series, I was thrilled to be invited to a hands-on preview of the multiplayer portion of the next game in the series, Far Cry 3. Each incarnation of Far Cry has been wildly different from the last, with only the presence of a level editor tying them all together. The developers of Far Cry 3's multiplayer portion have taken all the best bits of the previous Far Cry games, but here they have added their own flavour in the shape of team play. Here's Daniel Berlin from Ubisoft Massive to explain more about the team play aspect of Far Cry 3 and how it affects the overall gameplay. When we set out to create this, this new take on team play, we wanted to make sure that team play reached everyone, so we didn't want to seclude it into certain roles, so we're not going to have like um, a medic only being able to revive. So for example, everyone can revive everyone. And uh, so, so the, like, keeping that open to everyone. And also the battle cries, which is a new feature for Far Cry, is a, uh, is a rallying shout, a boosting of your teammates, also available to anyone at, at any time. And the, the cool thing about battle cry is that it's not an action that, that takes any time from me. If I'm aiming down the site and I'm shooting, I can do a battle cry while I'm doing that. I can do it while running, jumping, swimming. So it's like, it's, it's just like very effortless because you just scream it out. Now, also uh, an interesting thing is that we want, didn't want to award people who get a lot of kills by giving them a tool to kill even more. We wanted to award people who use these team play interaction uh, features that we created by giving them access to the very powerful weapons. And these are the, the team support weapons. And these are the, the very, very powerful weapons that you call in from off map. Um, and they have a very, very specific Far Cry flavor to them. So you're not going to see um, military airplanes coming in, dropping down military grade bombs. You're going to see um, a crazy pirate in a helicopter pushing out a barrel containing a chemical that makes you go crazy. So if you get that chemical on your, on, on your head, you're going to see like the, the people that were your friends a second ago and now look like uh, dark demons with glowing eyes and we, we turn friendly fire on and this creates mind games and brings the insanity into the multiplayer and it's just uh, it's just great. Now anyone concerned that these team support weapons Daniel has mentioned will make Far Cry 3 too much like Call of Duty need not worry. Whereas in Call of Duty games you are rewarded through the amount of kills alone, here in Far Cry 3 you have to play for your team to score points. The team points put you at the top of the leaderboards and build up your team support points, not the kills. So battle cries, reviving, killing, capturing, all these things must be done as much as possible per match if you wish to gain the team support weapons. Obviously working as a team would be best here, but thankfully it's not as restrictive as it sounds. Battle cries are easy to pull off, just clicking in both thumbsticks at the same time will rally people near you, so running into a group of teammates and getting your guy to buff them with his battle cry will score you big points. Reviving people is also a good way to bump up your score. Your map and HUD will mark down players who can keep themselves alive for a short period of time by hammering at a certain button on their controller. They are easy to see and you can even tag them and let them know you are coming to the rescue, so you can do hit and run revives to rack up the points. Making sure you are always chasing down the level objectives will also help you score big, as will killing many enemies of course. Now it's also worth noting quickly that you can heal yourself in Far Cry 3, much like you could in Far Cry 2, but without all the crazy bone popping nail pulling animations that you saw in the previous game. In Far Cry 3 you merely inject yourself with adrenaline and then off you go on your way. Far Cry 2 saw the addition of character classes to the multiplayer matches, but many found it incredibly annoying, especially when you spent ages upgrading your weapons only to have all the upgrades lost once you joined a new lobby. The class system is back in Far Cry 3, but it's radically different. Here's Daniel to explain. So we're not creating a class system per se that we don't have an engineer, we don't have a medic, we have a very open class system. So when you create your class, it's a, it's, it's a neutral class. You can name it what you want. We will. You can have whatever weapon you want. You can have whatever battle cry you want. You can have whatever skills you want. So you're not restricted to a certain type of gameplay because um, by a predetermined class. You decide what type of uh, character and what type of gameplay you want to have on your class. 
Now in the menus there were also pre-created standard classes you could pick as well, such as the soldier and sniper, but the custom classes let you create your own class to your liking, and best of all you don't lose anything you've worked hard for once the game ends. It's not just your weapons and battle cries that you can upgrade though, you can also unlock and customise your end of match movies. But what the hell are end of match movies? Please explain, Daniel. The end of match movies is, is a thing that you star in as a player. Um, it's a really, really carrot to be to be the top player of the team. Because if you are the top tier player of the team, you have learned to, uh, to master the team play mechanics. Because the team play mechanics give so many points that you're going to push yourself to the top of the team. You're going to be the, the number one team player. And if you manage to be that guy, you are the star of the show in the end of match movies. Now, as the star of the show in the end of match movie, you get to decide, uh, decide the fate of the, the, the winning player on the losing team. So he's going to be bound in front of you and you're going to get to decide do you want to punish him or show him mercy. And this is done by simply clicking either one or two buttons. Um, so yes, that's a really, really cool, um, cool feature. And these interactive sequences, we shot a lot of them. And as you level up, you're going to unlock more and you can customize which type of punish sequence you want to have and what type of mercy sequence you want to have. Anyone who has played Killzone 3 will be familiar with the end of match movies which star the match's best players. And while this feature in Far Cry 3 is similar and obviously inspired by Killzone 3, here they are slightly interactive and with so many different custom finishes to choose from, it should be fun waiting to see what happens when the winning player chooses mercy or punishment at the end of each match. Now we got to play on two different game modes while we were at the event, the first being Domination which is shown in all this lovely game footage that's been playing throughout this video. It's a familiar concept, especially to those who like Battlefield, but what won't be familiar is the game's new mode, Firestorm, which Daniel is about to tell us about. Firestorm is our idea of, because fire was a very big uh, thing in Far Cry 2, so we decided pretty early on that we wanted to, okay, we, we, we need to bring the fire into Far Cry 3, so we dedicated an entire game mode uh, to fire. And the, the basic, like the, the feeling of it is basically that you spawn in the beginning of the match and you have this beautiful, lush, colorful Far Cry Island at the beginning of the match. But at the end of the match, it's all like scorched earth, fires everywhere. So the map transforms and not just visually and also like the gameplay changes dynamically as fires grow. So in the beginning of a match, you might be taking certain routes. But as you progress and more fires grow, you're going to notice that the gameplay, uh, the layout of the map changes because the one route you took a second ago is now burning as you can't take that. So we can change uh, the flow of the map dynamically as the game progresses. To win at Firestorm, each side must set fire to two fuel depots located near the opposition's spawn points. Once one is set on fire, you have a limited time to set the second depot on fire before the first burns out and you have to start again. Once both depots are burning, a radio transmitter becomes active, which both teams need to try to capture. Once a team activates the transmitter, a plane will fly over the map, and depending on which team activated it, it will either drop gasoline, which will end the match, or water, which will douse the flames and reset the match. It was a hectic tug of war which became really intense as each team struggled to capture the radio transmitter. The fact that there is a way to reset the match meant that no team gave up the fight. There is always a chance you can pull things back and turn the tide of the match which made everyone fight their hardest. Hopefully this will minimise rage quitters and encourage even more teamwork. Finally, we were treated to a little video explaining to us a new social aspect of the game which takes Far Cry 3 out of the consoles and onto the web and smartphones, encouraging sharing and team play again. I can't show you that video, but I can get Daniel to fill us in on what this social aspect actually is. As you play the game, you're going to level up. You're going to unlock weapons, you're going to unlock skills, you're going to unlock battle cries, and you're going to unlock uh, the interactive sequences that you also saw. Um, but as a little separate channel, we also have the intel. So after each match, there's a chance that you will find a flash drive uh, searching the battlefield. Um, on this flash drive, uh, there's decoded information. So what you do is that you need, you, you need to uh, decode this uh, encrypted information. And once you've done that, you gain um, access to the, the custom guns, like the, the really, really powerful guns, the, the most powerful guns in the game, or the, the most powerful attachments to the guns in the game. Now, the social aspect comes in when, um, for example, I'm a sniper guy. 
sec, for per sec. And I get an assault rifle that I don't want, I can send that custom assault rifle to my friend. So we're going to feature uh, gifting between players online. Um, and this can all uh, be, be handled on the web or on your, uh, on your smartphone. So there you have it. Far Cry 3 is not only set to revolutionise team playing in FPS, but by closing the gap between gaming and social media, it's creating a new way for us to interact with our friends on and offline and customise our weapons and loadouts. I thoroughly enjoyed my time playing Far Cry 3 multiplayer. Stay tuned for my first impressions of the game where I let you know exactly what I thought about the gameplay and also my hopes and fears for one of my most anticipated games of 2012. I suggest that you come back for a taste later. You won't regret it.